different political perspectives of the North and South meant that they both had different interpretations of the events that led up to the Civil War. The Northerners wanted federal government and the Southerners wanted states' rights. The Mexican Cession gave the two sides an opportunity for more power in politics, but also made them realize the differences that they had. The Mexican Cession was made after the Mexican-American War in 1848, and it gave the U.S. a lot of land. This led to dispute between Northern and Southern Democrats over whether or not the territories gained to be slave or free states. This event was a major turning point in the history of America and basically started the whole Civil War. The Compromise of 1850 was a series of bills written to alleviate the situation between the North and the South. The Civil War would have come from the dispute, if not for the Compromise, but a certain proviso caught the attention of the South. The Compromise of 1850 shows that the North and South were willing to set aside the differences and make compromises near the beginning of this period. However, they could not follow through with the Compromise. The Fugitive Slave Law was passed in 1850. It basically abolished the Missouri Comp Compromise Line and stated that any white who saw a runaway slave had to capture the slave and return it to the authorities. This was very significant because it made all people aware of slavery and made them obligated to return slaves. This hurt the slaves because it was very difficult for them to escape from slavery. They would either have to go to Canada, Mexico, Africa, or a different place where slaves could be free. This upset all Northerners because it put, really put the South in charge of the government and of different laws that could be passed. This proviso, also known as the Wilmot Proviso, would have made it so that no territory acquired from the Mexican Cession would be a slave state. The South called for rejection almost immediately. The proviso was a grave threat to their way of doing things, namely, slavery. Of the compromises made leading up to the Civil War, the Wilmot Proviso was one of the most Northern biased. This relates to the thesis because the Wilmot Proviso showed that the Northern politics were strongly advocating that any and all of the Mexican session be free land. Uncle Tom's Cabin was published by Harriet Beecher Stowe in 1852. As one of the most influential works during the pre-Civil War era, it caused people to see the injustice and cruelty of slavery. This new insight caused people to become abolitionists and also to be more sympathetic towards the slaves. At first, it was mostly women who chose to become abolitionists, but later on, more men joined. The book itself basically said that all slave owners deserved to rot in hell, and that Northerners who didn't actively try to stop slavery were just as evil as the slave owners. Uncle Tom's Cabin was very important in the inevitability of the so upcoming Civil War because it promoted a lot of people to become abolitionists and represented Southerners as vile and cruel people. This book embodied the view of a slave and took it to an extreme. The Kansas-Nebraska Act was passed in 1854. This act stated that people living in Kansas and Nebraska territories could decide if they wanted to have slavery within their borders or not. This prompted the move of a lot of people into these areas. This upset many Northerners, though, because Kansas and Nebraska were both above the Missouri Compromise Line. The Southerners loved this idea because it gave them an opportunity to gain more slave land. Kansas came into the Union as a free state in 1861, and Nebraska came in as a free state in 1867. The government gave the people of Kansas and Nebraska the opportunity to vote on whether they would be slave or free states. Though the South did not receive either of these two states, this showed the imbalance that was shifting. Leaving Kansas is the name that is given to the series of violent outbreaks after the passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act. When Northerners and Southerners began to move into the same areas, people became furious. A leading anti-slavery supporter, John Brown, rallied 19 other men, including his sons and some black men, and began terrorizing Southerners during the night. They killed many people who supported slavery in an effort to threaten Southerners to move back to their respective states and to have the votes for the state in their favor. When John Brown was caught and put on trial, he said that he was worth hanging if it meant that the North would be a step closer to freeing the slaves. This relates to our thesis because the people in Kansas took matters into their own hands to try and convince the opposing side not to vote. People fought and killed each other over their beliefs, morals, and political party. Almost all these events lead up to the birth of the Republican Party. After the events leading up to the Bleeding Kansas Affair, the Northern Democrats decided that they had had enough. They formed their own party, the Republican Party. The South became suspicious. After all the conflict between the two regions, the North breaks off to form their own party. The Free Soiler Party was one thing, but this was a division of the United States into basically two regional political parties, one for slavery and one against slavery. The birth of the Republican Party is related to our thesis because of the splitting of the Democratic Party. 
Obviously, the Northern Democrats had different views from the Southern Democrats over slavery. Not wanting to be related, they created their own party. This showed how strongly the people detested each other. The Dred Scott decision was made in 1857. The story is that Dred Scott was taken onto free soil by his owner. This should have deemed him a free man. Yet Dred Scott sued his owner in Supreme Court, but the residing judge, Tommy, ruled that the black men did not have any rights similar to those of the white. This decision caused an outbreak because Tommy was not honoring the Compromise of 1850. According to the Compromise, Dred Scott should have been free. The Dred Scott decision relates directly to our thesis because the situation was able to instigate a violent reaction to the North. This should not have been surprised though because the residing judge, Taney, was a southerner and a slave owner. Taney's decision to rule against the Compromise of 1850 showed that the federal court could have been persuaded by different political standpoints. One of the incidents that caused conflict between the North and the South, or was an example of conflict between the North and the South, was Harper's Ferry. In 1859, a northerner named John Brown took his sons down to the south to broke into an arsenal and stole a variety of guns. From there, he and his sons went on to try and free slaves and incite rebellion in the south. The south did not take this incident well. It looked almost as if the north was sending in spies to free slaves and cause anarchy in the south. Harper's Ferry is in direct relation to our thesis because it also showed that people were taking matters into their own hands. John Brown attempted to arm slaves which would incite a rebellion among the south. John Brown's view on slavery was that it should, was vile and disgusting, while the South's interpretation of John Brown's acts was that the people wanted to rebel against the state's rights and the South as a whole. The election of 1860 was mostly between Abraham Lincoln and Stephen Douglas. The other candidates were John Bell and John Breckinridge. It was a very close race between Lincoln and Douglas, and had there only been one Southern Democrat running for presidency, Lincoln would have lost the election. Though the Northern ballots contained all of the other candidates' names, the Southern ballot excluded Lincoln's. The election of 1860 relates most to our thesis by showing the South that the North could win an election without their votes at all. The Republican Party had become so strong that when the Democratic votes were split between two candidates, they could overcome the Southern votes. When Lincoln was elected, it led a whole disaster and ended with the South seceding. From the Mexican session onward, a civil war was inevitable. The two parties in the country could not agree on any major event between 1848 and 1860. When Lincoln was elected to office, the South seceded from the nation. The Civil War was a traumatic event in the history of the United States. You want to 